Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams, for another edition of New Horizons, the daily podcast and radio ministry of Flat Creek Baptist Church. It is my greatest joy to be able to dive deep into God's Word with you on a daily basis, and I pray these devotions are a great blessing to you as well. If you are in the Gainesville area and you would like to know more information about Flat Creek Baptist Church, please go to our website, Flat Creek Church. Church.net. You can find all the information you need to know about us there. Uh, many people want to know how they can give to New Horizons podcast and radio ministry. If you would like more information to that, just go to our website, flatcreekchurch.net. Anything you give, 100% goes directly back into this ministry that we might continue reaching people with the gospel of Jesus through the radio and internet. Now, Today we're going to be back in Mark 14 and we're going to come to the narrative of Judas who is going to set it in his heart to betray the Lord Jesus Christ. Now before we go there, I want us to go all the way back to John chapter number 6. All right, so the scene has been set. Jesus feeds 5,000 people on a hillside. 5,000 men, the Bible says, and many commentators say there was probably many, many more, and there could have been. Uh, and I love how pastors always uh, try to calculate the numbers. Well, with women and children, it could have been 10,000, 20,000, and it could have been. Uh, but here's what I want to say to you. The Bible tells us 5,000 men were there. Friends, that's enough for me. If he fed 5,000 men with two fish and five loaves, that's a miracle enough. He doesn't ha it doesn't have to be 20,000. We don't have to make it sound any greater than what it already is. 5,000 men on a hillside and Jesus with two fish and five loaves feeds them and there are baskets left over of food. It's an amazing scene. Well, the Bible tells us in John 6 that at that moment, when they saw this happen, that the Jews immediately tried to force Jesus to be the Messiah. At that moment, they desired, Jesus, let's go. Man, you are the Messiah. You are the Savior. You are the warrior king we've been looking for. You are the prophet like unto Moses. And if you go to Jerusalem right now, take up arms against Rome. We've got your back. We'll go to war with you. We'll fight with you. We'll go and do whatever you need us to do. Jesus, we've got your back. We're your army. And what does Jesus do in that moment? Well, Jesus puts the 12 disciples on a boat, sends them away, sends the crowds away, and Jesus goes up into the wilderness to pray. Well, the next day they come searching for Jesus in John 6. Jesus says, you're not searching for me uh, because of who I am. You're searching to me just because you ate the loaves and the fishes and your stomach got full. And Jesus goes on to tell them who he is. He says, one greater than Moses has come. In fact, Moses gave you manna in the wilderness, but I am the bread which has come down from heaven, Jesus says. He says, I'm the bread of life. Moses gave you manna in the wilderness. You will eat of it and eventually you will die. But if you, if you feast on me, you will live forever, Jesus tells them. And so Jesus is setting and staking claim that as the Messiah in John 6, he cannot secure the crown without going to the cross. It's in this passage that he speaks of the flesh and the blood that's going to be spilled for the sins of the world. And well, in this text, the Bible tells us over in John chapter number 6, that as Jesus begins to teach these things, that those who were on the hillside with him, they begin to scratch their head and they say, who can accept this teaching? It's too hard for us. We, we, we've never heard anything like this. And Jesus asked them that in question. He says, does this offend you? And he says, then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some among you who don't believe. Jesus is speaking directly to his disciples. 
And Jesus, the Bible says, John writes, for Jesus knew who from the beginning, those who would not believe, and the one who would betray him. A little while later in this scene, Simon Peter says, Lord, who, where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus replied, didn't I choose you the 12, yet one of you is the devil. He was referring to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, one of the 12, because he was going to betray him. Jesus told this story, or this story is told of Jesus well over a year before Judas is going to betray Jesus. But yet here in the Bible, the book of Mark, chapter number 14, what Jesus already knew about Judas actually becomes true. In Mark chapter 14, Judas is in the house. He has watched Mary anoint the body of Jesus. Mark has said that he was a thief from the very beginning. He was already dipping into the money bag. He, he was already scheming. He was already plotting, thinking, what a waste. If I had that money in my pocket, just think what I could do with it. I could buy this. I could buy that. I could live a luxurious lifestyle. He had all these things in his mind about what he could do with that money. And Jesus has now scolded him and rebuked him in front of everybody. It's not about the money. It's not about the poor. What she's done is a noble thing, and it's going to be remembered of her. As long as the gospel is preached, well, friends, guess what? There's another man in the story that's also going to be remembered as long as the gospel is preached. Remember I told you yesterday to leave a godly legacy? Well, Judas is about to leave a godless legacy. The one who Jesus identified back in John 6 as having the devil in him is now going to come to the forefront. And what does the Bible say? Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went to the chief priest to hand him over. And when they heard this, they were glad, glad and promised to give him silver. So he started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. 30 pieces of silver as prophesied. Friends, let me tell you this. I looked it up the other day. I typed into Google, how much is 30 pieces of silver that Judas betrayed Jesus? How much is that worth? I'm thinking thousands of dollars. You know what it said? $167 in U.S. currency. Can you imagine? Judas sold Jesus. G Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas literally sold his soul to Satan for 167 bucks. This is shameful. This is one who walked with Jesus, which friends reminds us that people can have on the right clothes and they can have the right talk and they can say all the right things about Jesus, but beneath the surface, they can be controlled by the devil. What you need to do and what I need to do is with the discernment of the Holy Spirit of God, allow him to lead us and guide us into our relationships. And may he always point out to us those that are seeking our harm, not our good. But let us not shun them. Let us continue to love them knowing that they need the gospel. Jesus never shunned Judas. He always loved him, hoping that Judas would come to a knowledge of the truth. And that's what we're to do too. We're to continue loving even those who are opposed to us. Friends, Judah's heart was set on greed. Judah's heart was set on money. And now things are being put into action where Jesus is going to be crucified. May we guard our hearts today against the enemy who sneaks in subtly and destroys our lives. May God bless you as you continue this journey with him. And I'll see you next time on New Horizons.